from the SportsLink studios on the campus of Ball State University. Welcome into the month of March in a brand new episode of SL Stories. I'm Charlie Maurer, joined by Emma Potter, of course, as usual. Thank you so much for being with us for another episode of SportsLink Stories presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. And Emma, a jam-packed episode for them today. Exactly. We have the end of winter sports and the start of spring sports, so it leaves a lot of things going on here on the campus of Ball State. Yeah, we'll check in with our friends over at Cardiff, Wales, as well as check in with softball and baseball for the first time as the spring season continues. All that coming up on SL Stories, of course, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. Let's Let's now check in with our sponsor, Victory Honda of Muncie. To catch the best stories in Ball State sports every month, tune in to the award-winning show, SportsLink Stories, presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. Victory Honda of Muncie is proud to support the creative storytellers of Ball State SportsLink. The softball team has just reached the midpoint in the start of MAC play in their season, the pressure is on as they have a lot left for the rest of this year. Produced by Rachel Henderson and Nate Locker, here is their 2024 hype video. In the heart of the diamond, where dedication meets determination. Formed from years of immense pressure, crushing to its core. But this pressure isn't meant for glamour. This pressure is where champions are forged, where the mind is put over matter. And when the time is right, that pressure becomes power. Fifteen members of Ball State SportsLink spent their 2024 spring break in Cardiff, Wales for a study abroad trip in partnership with our friends at Cardiff Metropolitan University. A full feature length documentary titled Transatlantic Storytelling 2024 will be re released later on in the year. But first, we give you a sneak peek into the relationship between two American rugby players in Cardiff, E.C. Cantrell and Porter Goodrum. Oh my God, Porter! <laughs> hey, see, let's talk about when we first met. Yeah, yeah. Well, we knew each other's name pretty much in middle school. He played rugby, but then we went to high school together. And we still never really talked. Yeah. In, in the senior year of high school. Yeah, we were on the same rugby team. Like I joined later than him, um, but we always trained together. Um, but the girls and guys were still kind of separate. And then we came to Cardiff Met, and I just like went up to him because I knew that. They were the only rugby Americans that I like, that were from where I was from, so I was like, might as well get to know them. And then since then, I think we hung out every day, yeah. every other day. So all along, we've just been friends. So connected for so long. Yeah. Didn't realize it. My sister told me that that's called an invisible string. Taylor Swift. Well, she's a big Swifty. <laughs> Not, but she informed me of this after finding out about me and Porter. Must be real. Must be real. Swifties are always right, I guess. Yeah. <laughs> My name is Porter Goodrum. I'm from Charlotte, North Carolina. And I play for Cardiff Met RFC. But Porter Goodrum, a man who's got everything. Pace, power, passion. So Porter, obviously, um, we've got a skate park behind us. Yeah. Uh, do you want to let us know, firstly, just why we're here and your background in skateboarding? Um, well, I don't know. It's pretty interesting. I'd say I've been skateboarding for nine-ish years on and off. I remember my first uh, training session at Cardiff Met. I actually skateboarded home from it back into the city at the hotel I was staying at. So that was pretty interesting. But 
No, I love skateboarding. It's always been a part of my life for quite a long time. So what kind of team did you play for in the States? And then how did you transition then from that to Cardiff Met? Yeah, so playing back in the States was pretty interesting. It was very, it's a very niche sport back there. So U19 rugby is when I really started to take rugby serious, played uh, for my home club, the Charlotte Tigers. A lot of love for them. They're a great club. And I got hooked up with Eagle Impact Rugby Academy where I went on tours to Canada, Ireland, Spain, really got to see the world and see what rugby was as a game internationally, which was great. And so when I was doing that, I met a man named Di Morgan who came to one of my training sessions back in Charlotte. And I just talked to him and expressed to him that I was pretty interested in coming over here to Wales and how I really wanted to take my rugby to the next level. And then since then, just never looked back really. And uh, obviously you've played quite a lot at championship <laughs> level. Um, yeah. How have you found that as an experience? Um, it's very tough, very, very tough. I had to learn maybe a bit of the dark arts of rugby, definitely playing in the championship, especially at the way games, having the fans yell at you. They let you hear it about everything, your hair, your boots, your socks, the wrist tape you've got on, all that sort of thing. So it was great playing in the championship, learning all that. You made your Bucks Super Rugby debut this year as well. Um, yes. Against Exeter. I think BC was the good commentator on that one. He's a great player and um, he's really worked his uh, way up in the at, at part of Met. I think he started on the fours or fives and to see him now on Super Bucks is a um, proud moment. I've seen pretty much every Bucks Super Rugby game since I've been at Cardiff Met. And to actually be on the field, get supported by the Ultras, have them cheering for you, especially against a team like Exeter, was very tough just because of how good of a side they were, but it was so eye-opening. I loved every moment of it. And uh, your first try followed on a few games later yeah. uh, against Swansea. Um, how was that to cross that white line? Oh, that one, that was massive. I was, so, I was so excited for that. I actually scored my first try for Cardiff Met against Swansea in my first year. So getting my first BSR try against them was unreal. And to the Republic. Which One nation. Six years. Liberty and justice for all. <laughs> You're not the only American at Cardiff Met. There's a little community of you in sort of an American house. Um, can you just tell us a bit more about the Charlotte <laughs> contingent at Cardiff Met? And EC and Brandon are my two housemates at the moment. EC and I have gone to preschool, middle school, high school, and now uni together, which has been insane. But uh, her and I didn't become friends until we actually came to uni, which is pretty interesting since we've known each other, well, known of each other for so long. How have you found living in Cardiff and sort of settling into life here in Wales as well over the last three years? It was definitely hard at the start, just being away from my family and things like that, but having all the Americans around me and being able to lean on them when times got hard and I was missing my family a bit much was really nice. So. I loved, adjusting was hard, but I love it over here. It's so much fun, it's a great experience. Your brother, I understand, is quite a good footballer <laughs> as well. He's dying. Goodrum pulls away, Goodrum's in there! Goodrum with the header! Goodrum with the Him and I have always been extremely competitive. We still are, even when we go back home now, when we gym or train together, it's always who can get one up on the other. And just seeing his journey of where he's gone from high school to uni to now the professionals is just amazing to follow him on that journey. Finally, what does the future hold for Paul Goodwin? That is the million dollar question. <laughs> no, I'm not, I'm not too sure, but I know I definitely want to continue to play rugby. I've been in talks with an agent who thinks that I'll be able to do that back in the States in the MLR. I've been in talks with a few MLR teams about different things, but it's def nothing set in stone at the moment, but I would love to represent my country, that would be a dream come true. I'd love to continue sevens, that's what I really enjoy playing, but I'm not too sure, whatever can uh, help me continue to play rugby, really. Hard work and sacrifice are just two of the things it requires to be a Division I football player. And three Ball State athletes, past and present, exemplify what this means. Produced by Claire Whitty, Charlie Maurer, and Sam Finley, here is the preview of the feature-length documentary, On the Line. I probably picked up a football when I was like two or three. 
I was so happy playing football. Like there was just so much joy that I found in it. And I fell in love with that Friday night that that's the guy, I want to be the guy. He, he wanted to be a Division I football player. That was his goal. Football just became an obsession. The goal to win with all your guys, it's just nothing like it. It consumes your life. Um, and to have it taken away from you. It's kind of your worst nightmare. wasn't big enough, wasn't strong enough, wasn't fast enough. A lot of football players in college started playing when they were little kids. It's been all that they've known for a long time. So what happens next? Can you let the game of football go? As spring practice continues for Ball State football, a few unexpected alumni have turned back up in Muncie recently, one being a now Super Bowl champion for the Kansas City Chiefs and former cornerback for the Cardinals, Nick Jones. Ball State Athletics' Mick Tidro caught up with him after practice earlier this month. Hey, Super Bowl champion Nick Jones, Ball State football alum, in the house today for Ball State spring practice. Nick, first and foremost, how heavy is the Lombardi Trophy? It's actually lighter than you might think. Uh, it's a crazy statement, but it's, it's, it's not as heavy as people think. Uh, what was this last year like for you at Kansas City? Drafted, go through the process, and have an opportunity to play in the NFL? Uh, a special year, definitely one I always remember. You know, they always say you, you know, you remember your rookie year. It was the longest year of my life, just because I started prepping for the draft way back in January and didn't get done playing until this year, February. But it, it was a special year for sure. Met a lot of special people, made a lot of memories I'll never forget. Nick, what's it like for you to, to be back and, and speak to the group after practice today? Um, special, just because the guys who came before me, you know, um, just like getting like video calls from guys like Willie Sneed or the Danny Penners, you know, coming back and seeing guys like that, I always wanted to be, you know, like those guys, have my own version of that. Like, and, you know, I was here. I was these kids. So to be able to come back, you know, and be able to see these guys and they, I know like some of them guys, they look up to me and things like that is special. How special is it to have an alum that just won the Super Bowl, what, a couple of weeks ago and then wanted to come back and talk to the program? And, you know, the great thing is that was unannounced. I didn't know Nick was going to come here today, but that tells you uh, just who he is. He, you know, he, the offseason, uh, you know, started just recently for him. And, you know, the first place that he wants to go is back to where the journey all started. So very thankful and appreciative that, um, you know, he made time to come back here and to, to stay for the whole practice. Uh, you know, his evaluation skills are very good. Uh, and then to be able to share some words with the guys was, was really cool. Why did you decide to come back and do this? Because you just came off the Super Bowl. You've got off-season workouts to go. But why was it this timing special for you to come back and do it? Um, I think this is the time of year, like programs, especially, you know, like mid-major guys, you build the most. You know, you got a lot of in and out, a lot of roster turnover, a lot of staff turnover. This is when you, you know, you find out who you are. So I always like to come back, you know, to the guys, put a name to a face, let them know that, you know, I was here. I did do this before you. You know, I've seen it through. We, we hung a banner here. I got to go up to the next level. We about to hang another banner there. So I wanted to know that, you know, it's attainable. With baseball season well underway, junior catcher Hunter Dobbins is ready to take on more of a leadership role on his team this season. Produced by Callie Tuma, here is more from him. I think my first baseball memory is probably me, my dad, and my brother were outside my house in the backyard. I was real young, and we were finally practicing baseball, and he was throwing me ground balls. I'd taken that throw to my brother, and it was just like good jobs all around. But when we look at the video, it's pretty funny because like it was a very average job. Uh, me, I had to step up. Decker had to step step up. So like it's been different this year for sure because we finally have two different leaders because they were here for so long. So it's been a different change. 
you know, in the fall, it was like, you could tell it was a new team, but as we kept going and kept scrimmaging, it started to finally feel like right, things like that. And with the practices coming along, I think we're gonna be just fine by the time the season rolls around. All right, we're gonna give you a break from the stories now and instead give you a look into what's been going on in Ball State Athletics. First and foremost, we have a silver medal finish at the NCAA Indoor Championships for track and field. It's Janelle Rogers placing second in the pentathlon back on March 10th in Boston where the championships were held. So proud of Janelle and everything she's done this year for Ball State track and field. In other news, Ball State student athletes across campus have come together to help raise over $3,500 in efforts to help the Muncie community with their foundation, Muncie Mission. Also, Ball State Gymnastics continues its domination as they take home back-to-back -back MAC regular season championships after losing just one meet in conference play all year. The Cards will be competing in the NCAA Regionals as a team starting April 3rd. And of course, the biggest night in Ball State sports is coming back to Worthen Arena on April 22nd. It's the Chirpies for back-to-back -back years. You'll see which athletes and Ball State athletes take home trophies that night. A very exciting night for Ball State athletics and of course, Ball State sports. Like one athlete who will be in attendance representing Ball State baseball is Nick Gregory, an outfielder and a new face on the team. I'm living the dream right now, honestly, because I always wanted to get to this level. That's the sole reason I did go to the junior college, is to um, eventually get to this level. So I am kind of living the dream right now, honestly, and then hopefully just playing as long as I can. Whatever opportunity I get, I'll definitely take it. Uh, Rich Maloney drove all the way out to my high school, um, saw me work out, and then we had a little conversation after, um, and then he ended up wanting me to come here, and I looked into it a little bit. It's a good fit. I love the campus, good size, and uh, we obviously get a lot of wins. Definitely repeat as MAC champions, for sure. It's really cool. I've been looked at as sort of a leader, and it's cool being a senior because it's my last go-around, so just leave it all out on the field, and uh, hopefully good things happen. This month is a celebration of female athletes here at Ball State. Their hard work, dedication, and leadership has inspired even me as an athlete here at Ball State. Produced by Josh Brunette with narration by our friend from Cardiff Met, Ella Jones. Here is a celebration of Women's History Month. Here's to the women who stand the women who take their lives in their hands, who hold to the truth of the point of pain, who are told they're insane and to stay in their lane. Here's to the women who still speak out, the women who say, speak, scream, and shout to make their voices heard. I know there's safety in silence, but you know that doesn't protect you from violence. Here's to the women who fight, the women with foresight, the women who teach and each of you expounding, expanding her reach so that others can fight. Here's to the women who know their worth and what their sisters are worth, who birth daughters for warriors with only their words. And who step down from pedestals, who rise up from doormats, who hang their full weight from barred windows and count reps while making their plans. Here's to those women. Here's to the women who stand.
What happens to a Division I men's volleyball player when their program no longer exists after their freshman year? Patrick Rogers has lived this journey as Sportslink's own Dade Massey brings you into the transition from his first school now at Ball State as the sophomore sensation Patrick Rogers continues to play well for the Cardinals. Depending on where you grew up and like how you got involved in the sport, you probably started out playing something else. You know, volleyball just has this kind of gravity that sucks you in. And with Pat starting so late, it was just a matter of, you know, just kind of fate for him, really. Just kind of like kept putting himself in the right place at the right time and finding his path and then ending up here at Ball State. I was just excited to go play college volleyball. I wasn't uh, sad or anything or thinking anything too serious. I wasn't stressed out. I was just excited to play college volleyball. And and see how the first season went. St. Francis College has announced the elimination of its 21-team NCAA athletics program due to the financial impact of the COVID-19 pandemic. It's back to the drawing board on how they'll finish out their college careers without their sport. I look at that and I think, man, like how much more luck is there involved in him getting to Ball State? And, uh, and because he's so young in the sport, in experience, he has so much room to grow. And uh, I think he's... He's just scratching the surface of what he's capable of. Feeling like your top dog, that's the New York vibe. It was awesome. It was uh, always busy, always doing something. Or He's going around and, and um, there's a lot of access in, in New York City to, uh, to do stuff, play volleyball, play beach volleyball, some good courts in New York City. Um, it's only 15 minutes away, so yeah, it was awesome. I played basketball since I could remember. It was the first sport I really took seriously and I, uh, I played up until senior year of high school until that was over and I think I was the best at it out of all the sports, but I think that's cool. my favorite was basketball. My sisters always played volleyball, so I was always around it, and uh, never really played a competitive setting. And my parents thought I should try it, and I did one year, and it was uh, not in my position now. I was a middle originally, because our one of the teammates, one of the middles I was uh, playing with broke his pinky first one me. So for the rest of the year, I had to play in the middle. Um, yeah, and then, and then uh, I switched positions the next year. And we, it was fun. It was it was my first year, and I uh, it was a lot of older guys I looked up to. It was an 18s team, and I was 15, and a lot of guys I looked up to on that team, and still do. I originally committed to Pepperdine, and um, decommitted from there because they had two new coaches that left, and uh, so I committed to a school that I knew who the coach was and trusted who the coach was, and. Um, that my freshman year was there and it was good and, and uh, unfortunately the program got shut down so they brought us into a um, into the auditorium all the athletes at the school and said um, basically the program's being shut down so it was a lot of people that were sad and, lot, and I was also affected by that and um, yeah, it was, it was a rough time. It was like, dang, you know, like it's just, just that's it, you know, and everybody had to find a new place to transfer, and it was, it was not fun. Um, I was just hoping someone would pick me up and then, so I could play somewhere else. spent some time with the national team this summer and so did I. We were just in two different groups of the national team uh, and when I heard he was getting invited I flew out there and observed a training and, um, and had a chance to kind of meet with him a couple times so, um, so yeah it's been it's been a huge blessing to have him a part of the program and, and glad that we were uh, able to kind of take this like recruiting interest and actually come to the point where we are now where he's on the team and, and doing such a good job. I don't really have much expectations. I just hopefully want to uh, 
win a uh, MEVA, MEVA tournament. I want to win that with the, with the team, and, and I think we're able to. He's been good ever since he's entered this team. A later addition to the team, only a sophomore, his first year playing at Ball State, but he's certainly been making a huge impact. You know, we want him to be a leader in his own way. I think that's become a big part of, uh, of what he's kind of evolved into is you don't need to be a, a loud voice in the gym to be a leader. Uh, how do you lead without being outspoken? And that's through my actions and, and, and my way I carry myself. And then how I manage myself in competition, you know. Um, there's moments, you know, in a couple games where he's really got into it and it fires the group up. Um, and I think he's learned how to figure out a way to leverage that to benefit our team. I don't need to play super high and super low. I just need to find a balance on the game. And when he plays steady like that, it just has a positive impact with everybody else that's around him on the court. That'll wrap up another episode of SportsLink Stories presented by Victory Honda of Muncie. A big shout out to all of the sports on campus, the players, the coaches that took the time to help us with these stories this month. And for more on what you saw today for everything covering Ball State sports, be sure to follow our social media at BSU SportsLink. That'll do it for our coverage here in the month of April for SportsLink Stories. Big thank you to Tristan Floor and Tyler Climbs back in the studio. So for Emma Potter, I'm Charlie Maurer. We will see you in the month of April for SportsLink Stories presented by Victory Honda of Muncie.